Welcome back to another awesome finger style lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I'm going to share with you one of the most fun and extremely effective finger style exercises. And it's so effective because it's so simple, and yet, depending on where you are in your musical journey, no matter your level, you can challenge yourself with this exercise. Okay, because um, you can. You can get so many different results, so many different musical results with this exercise um, thanks to its simplicity. So whatever's in your arsenal, it can help you enhance your skills. The exercise itself is built around one chord basically. It's A minor and then A minor over G and A minor over F. And for some of you, just changing these chords will be difficult at first, okay? But then I want you to add soloing. Okay, you see, you can manipulate the chords to create a lot of sound, okay? Using just the chord and the open strings and the bass notes. Okay, now of course you can complicate it even farther with okay, with the A minor scale, but I want you to challenge yourself to see what you can get only with the chord, with no added scale notes. Okay, you can add one scale note if you want, but the more you limit yourself, the better this exercise will be for you. Okay, so um, before I start breaking it down, I just want to remind you that there are now two weekly lessons here on Lick and Riff. Two weekly lessons that we've finally done it, and it's made available thanks to those among you who support me on Patreon and those of you who were kind enough and trustful enough in my teaching to purchase my Complete Guitar Freedom course series. So uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And if this is new to you, if you weren't aware of my my course series, my Complete Guitar Freedom course series, or my Patreon page, check the links in the description and uh, go check out my courses and whatever you choose to give on Patreon. I thank you in advance for your generosity. So I'm looking forward to sending you the courses, but first let's learn this. So A minor, okay, and I'm playing strings two, three, and four, okay, for the chord. So um, I'm playing strings two, three, four, and five for A minor. Then I'm using my little finger for G, for three on the sixth string. And now I'm playing strings two, three, four, and six. Okay. For F, I'm using my thumb. Okay. okay, one on the sixth string. So now again, I'm playing string six, two, three, and four. Okay. 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 Now, just playing this in block chords can be creative. Okay, you don't even have to change anything yet. Okay, just try to play a rhythm to create a rhythm with the block chords, even before you are arpeggiated. You see, you can you can hammer on the bass notes. Okay, you can you can create funk just by playing around with what you have. You see? Now, um, it doesn't matter if you get sloppy. This is all about challenging yourself to find new ideas with familiar chords, okay? Now you can pull off, you can start by pulling off the one on the second string or hammering it on, okay? Whichever comes naturally to you. Okay, play the same idea over the bass changes and you'll see that immediately the music changes. You see, you get different ideas. 
Why is that? Because when you play A minor, it's A minor, obviously. When you play it with G on the bass, it becomes A minor 7, just with the 7 on the bass. You can also be a smarty, a smarty pants or a smart aleck and say that this is G, add 6, add 9, add 11, which would be true. It's true. But why not call it by its proper name, which is A minor 7? This is F major 7. So basically you're playing A minor with three different bass notes, but you're playing three different chords. Because A minor and A minor 7 are not the same chord. Some people would like you to believe that a minor 7 is the same as a minor chord, but it's not. A minor 7 has a major sound. It has a major sound because it's an inversion of a major six chord. And that's all I'm gonna say theoretically, okay? We're not gonna delve into this because this has nothing to do with the exercise. But a major, a, a minor chord has a major sound. It's, it's more major than minor, while a minor chord is very, very minor. So minor seven and minor are not the same chord. Okay, so start by challenging yourself to play around with the zero and one on the second string randomly while keeping the bass notes going. Once you're comfortable doing this, um, you can start arpeggiating. Okay, just, just downwards physically, just okay, downwards down the strings, okay, or upwards musically. Okay? Just arpeggiate, very, very simple arpeggios, nothing complicated yet. And add the zero and one, on the second string, randomly, randomly, I'm not kidding, randomly, don't, don't think about it, just let your finger do it. This is where you want to get, okay, if you're only a beginner, okay, if you're just a finger cell beginner, this is what you want to be able to do, to play around with this. The next step would be to create different patterns with your finger picking. pattern, okay? Completely break your own habits. Surprise yourself. Play one note and then change the bass string. Play two notes and then change the bass string. I did, I don't know what I did, I just let my fingers run free, but I did something like this. Okay? And then I did it once. And then I just mixed them. said that you can play the bass notes twice. You can play the bass notes twice, not once. You can remain on any chord that you want. You can Okay, and you can 
even change the rhythm patterns. The idea here is to not fall into your old habits. The moment you feel that you're playing something that feels familiar, break it. Break it completely. Break it apart and, and, and tear it into pieces and play something different instead. Twang, tear out the, the strings if you need to. Okay, just, just break your own habits. This is the beauty of this uh, exercise because it's so fun, it's so simple, and yet you can play literally hundreds of variations on these three chords. That's the beauty of it. Now, you can add three on the second string if you like. But I don't see any need to. I don't see any need to because, first of all, exhaust your possibilities on A minor itself. Okay, and you have... Okay, you have zero, two on strings three and four as well to play around with. lost myself there and for a second I think I even played the E bass for a moment but there's no such thing as a mistake if you keep going okay did you even notice that I was playing a wrong bass note uh, I don't think that most of you have um, and if you have then it's not it's not really a wrong bass note it's just a new bass note and you have you have E inside of A minor so I can say that I added A minor over E in it which is legitimate it's just uh, another form of A minor. So forget about mistakes. You're here to teach your fingers to do new things, new patterns. There are no mistakes. As long as you keep going, it's only music. It's only rhythm. It's only an exercise. Remember that. Have fun. This is what you want to do here. You want to have fun. Okay? No judgment. No criticism. Just have fun with your instrument. So, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the links in the description, the Patreon link, uh, the courses, my Complete Guitar Freedom course series. And I'm looking forward to sending you the courses. And uh, as I said, I thank you very, very much. I thank you in advance for anything you choose to give. Everything goes right back into Lick and Riff, whether you purchase the courses or support me on Patreon. Thank you very much. Two weekly lessons. Keep up and keep updated. Bye for now. Go have fun.